Well, thank you for watching my look back and reflections on my trip to Starbase, the highly successful launch number three of Starship, and also just some of the experiences that I had during the trip. And also, you can get a good view here of what it's like driving next to the production facility and the brand new Star Factory where the Starships are going to be constructed, also the boosters. And there's some additional infrastructure that's being put in throughout this area. Starbase is growing tremendously. And not only are they adding more of the housing and the production facilities, hiring more employees and thousands of contractors working at the site, but also uh, they are preparing to increase the launch cadence tremendously as well. And we're going to be seeing that over the next coming months. But before we get into what is coming next, I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking about what happened at the launch, some of the key highlights, and I want to go through some of the successes and next steps that we will see here at Starbase. Of course, the big event was the launch of Ship 28 and Booster 10. Here are a few sights and sounds. My favorite is the drone shots of the launch, just stunning imagery uh, coming off of the launch pad. And one of the big milestones was the separation and successful hot staging, as you can see here. A lot of excitement uh, from the SpaceX uh, people uh, watching along, and that's very well deserved. Of course, the ship making it to orbit. This is the first Starship to ever make it to essentially orbit. And of course, they had the tests that were going along during the orbit. One of them was the demonstration of the payload door. Another was tip tank transfer, demonstrating propellant transfer, which is a necessary step for uh, in orbit refueling. And of course, these views and commentary of the reentry. So let's listen on what it was like. We're seeing some plasma heating on the ship. Um, which is the, it is, this is the, the atmosphere interacting with a shock wave with the tiles and it's causing that glow that you see. Capturing the data and the video that we see here. But you're definitely seeing the interaction of the ship and the atmosphere right now. Wow. And that plume that you see is that plasma. It may affect the transmission because it interferes with the radio frequencies. However, if they're using Starship and it's on the uh, leeward side of the wind flow, we may actually, I mean, we're still getting telemetry and we're still getting views, which in and of itself is kind of historic. It's really great for me to listen back about what it was like during the live stream. And I hope that the excitement comes through from both Ellie and uh, myself during that live stream. There was a lot of great sounds, imagery, visuals, all the way through the mission, which was just really amazing to be a part of. And uh, of course, before the mission, SpaceX had a lot of milestones that they wanted to achieve with this launch. And I want to go through each of those, plus some of the next steps. Of course, the first... Uh, most important is getting all 33 Raptor engines on the booster uh, lit and to do a full duration burn, which is what they were able to do. And this is the second time they were able to do this when you look back at IFT2. And the success of having the booster get all the way up to separation was followed by a successful hot staging operation. Uh, three of the super heavy Raptor engines remained firing while the six upper stage our starship engines were able to ignite and the separation went extremely well and the booster was able to separate away and the ship continuing on towards orbit with no problems at all. After separation the booster was able to complete its flip maneuver basically turning around towards the 
origin point, the launching point, and had a full boost back burn with all 13 of the center engines. And this was preparing for the planned touchdown in the Gulf of Mexico as part of the testing program. Although the booster was able to successfully position itself for the landing burn and attempted uh, soft landing in the Gulf of Mexico, it did start having stability issues towards the end of this flight regime, and that caused a rapid unscheduled disassembly at about 462 meters above the surface of the water. And this is going to be one of the areas that the FAA will be conducting a mishap investigation about for this flight. Nevertheless, Starship 28 was able to complete its full burn with all six of its Raptor engines uh, to get to the expected orbit. Now, by design, it was not in a full orbit. They wanted to make sure that it re-entered properly, but this was a major milestone that was achieved uh, for SpaceX and something that they can continue to build on with future Starships. During the coast phase of the flight, Starship 28 was able to conduct several of the test objectives, one of which is opening and closing of the payload door. Another is a successful tip tank transfer of propellant, approximately 10 tons of propellant. This is part of a demonstration necessary for the NASA Artemis program and is a critical element for future on orbit refilling capability. Now, because the ship had a uncontrolled roll that put it out of the flight envelope to allow for the Raptor engine ignition, and that was to demonstrate deorbit burn capability. So that'll be something that will have to be done on a future flight. Another first and milestone for this flight uh, was Ships 28 re-entering into the atmosphere. It's the first time a Starship has done that. And despite uncommanded and uncontrolled roll and pitch rates during the re-entry, there was a lot of data collected for SpaceX on heating and vehicle control during the hypersonic re-entry. And also we were able to get live views seeing the plasma generation by the Starlink, which is another major win for SpaceX. It shows the capabilities of the Starlink program and also maybe for future spaceflight. Now, even though ultimately Ship 28 broke up in the atmosphere over the Indian Ocean, this is also considered a major milestone and success mainly because the ship was on the proper trajectory and it landed in the predicted area, which was away from populated locations. And again, that is an important part of spaceflight to be able to demonstrate those capabilities. Although not specifically called out by SpaceX as a milestone for this mission, I added in the success of Stage Zero, which is the ground support facilities, the launch pad, and the tower successfully surviving the launch in great shape, better than uh, both the first and the second missions. And this is very important because it's a critical element of reuse and also will help allow that increased cadence for Starship launches. With the successful conclusion of the third launch of Starship, SpaceX is going to be busy for the next uh, several weeks, uh, maybe a couple months, going through the data that they collected, uh, looking at what went well, what did not go well, what uh, changes they may need. They'll be preparing the hardware, the booster, and the ship for the next flight. And also, they'll be doing uh, steps to try to continue to increase their launch cadence throughout the year. Now, because of the results of the third launch, the FAA has initiated a mishap investigation. This is totally normal, and it's actually uh, a very good thing to go through because what this does is it allows SpaceX to take a look at the root causes of both the booster and the ship instability issues, come up with the mitigation steps, and make any hardware or software or possibly procedural corrections, and then show that the uh, FAA, in a collaborative process, what uh, has happened, what are their plans, and this will allow the FAA to uh, recertify and allow a another launch license. And most of the work is going to be done by SpaceX. And again, this is a collaborative effort. It's totally normal. And I'm hoping that uh, we'll see this particular mishap investigation conclude within a couple of months. So as you can see, there's a lot of successes, a lot of uh, positive uh, developments to build on. And I'm looking forward to the next launch coming up. 
and also just uh, taking a look back at some of the images and memories and people that I met during this trip. Now, one of the highlights was meeting up with John Krauss, who is the SpaceX Polaris Dawn photographer, and he was very kind to take some images of my Cybertruck and also a friend of mine's Cybertruck in front of the launch uh, platform before the launch actually happened. Of course, the people at Margaritaville, especially Irma, who were outstanding and gave the support to myself and Elliot Space for the live streams. Of course, I got a chance to meet Trey Wheeler, who is a SpaceX employee. Of course, Tim Dodd, everybody knows about him, everyday astronaut, and really doing a lot of great work to bring the complexity of space travel to the main population. Met a lot of other people that were interested in the Cybertrucks. Of course, I got the privilege of being able to live stream with Ellie, and those uh, live stream videos are on her channel. Of course, her boyfriend, Jonathan, was instrumental with helping as well, especially with the cameras and the setup. And of course, the images that came out of the launch, such as this one here, the actual rising of the Starship above the uh, launch tower, seeing all 33 engines lit. My personal favorite, the drone shots of the launch. Of course, seeing the Starship in orbit and who can ever forget the plasma that was building up as part of its re-entry. And one other fun event I was able to be a part of, thanks to meeting Chief, who is a photographer around Starbase. He invited me to kind of the traditional beach bonfire and uh, celebration right next to the launch tower. And a lot of people came out for that event. It just grew throughout the night. And I have heard about these uh, events, but I've never had a chance or the privilege to be able to participate. And I'll tell you, just a lot of really great people to talk with. And uh, as the sun started going down, a lot more people showed up. Uh, great views of the ocean, also of the launch platform. And just a lot of the stories that you don't hear that are behind the scenes it was just great to talk to people that work for the NSF channel, uh, other people that uh, work for What About It and other channels, uh, people that are SpaceX employees, Rocket Lab employees, uh, people who are, you know, post or their career within the space industry. They all came out as well. And of course, just, you know, great views of the launch pad, just thinking about all of the uh, launch activities that uh, happened throughout the week. So I just wanted to say thank you very much to Chief for inviting me to that event and uh, being able to you know, be a part of that space community that I've seen and uh, I've heard a lot about. And also many of us get a chance to see what's going on at Starbase because of their efforts. So uh, again, uh, just a, a great event to be a part of and I'm glad I'm able to share a little bit of that as well. As always, thank you very much for watching. I very much appreciate it and I hope that you found this informative and uh, entertaining as well. Lots to build on for the next flight and I can't wait to come back. Take care.